Today, Hope covers a letter from the mailbag. It's from a fan. Gosh, I hope it's one of mine. I've sent him like 500 of them. I'm Chris Cashin, and this is Third Mind Thursday. Hey, how y'all doing? This is Hoax Corner. Yep, I'm Hoax. That's my corner. whoop de doo Look, I ain't gonna lie. I'm a little pissed. See, I put out a bunch of videos now, and I, I don't even think anything that I've done has reached many people. I don't, I don't think you guys get it. I don't think you fans are doing your part, because I'm pretty sure I'm not famous yet. I mean, I, I still have to walk out on the street and, and go badger people to tell me who I am. Hell, sometimes I don't even think they know. Other day, I went and grabbed a little kid, and, and all he could do after I was shaking him was look at me with a big stare and big wide eyes and go, Chupacabra, and run off. I mean, this is ridiculous. I've been working hard putting these episodes up and not a single one's gone Ebola yet. I mean, I got like, maybe one of them's in three digits. I, I haven't even heard from J-Lo. J-Lo has not contacted me at all. And I've been making some sacrifices. I mean, hell, the other day, I had five strippers asking me to stuff $2 bills into their panties, but I was like, nope, I'm waiting for J-Lo. Have I heard from J-Lo? No, I have not. See, all fans need to get on the ball. I mean, I can't believe you don't want to share my wisdom with the world. <sighs> well, I actually do have one fan, one genuine fan that pays attention and cares. See, I got this letter right here in Hoax Mailbag the other day, and usually Hoax Mailbag is a closing segment, but I'm gonna make the whole episode about this here letter. Because this person gives a damn. <clears throat> so here we go. Hoax, just to let you know, I love watching your views on Hoax Corner. And am a big, real big fan of yours. I didn't say he was intelligent. I said he was a fan. Even tried that chokehold on one of my hunting buddies. Worked real good too. I really liked your video on big ass hunting weapons. I'm a big hunter myself, mainly bow hunting. Now, I have yet to figure out if that means he really enjoys hunting or he's a really fat guy who hunts, but I'm sure I'll figure that out at some point. I like the idea of that big ass arrow, especially if it is big enough to cut one in half. That way they ain't gonna run off and you have to go looking for them. I'm writing you for your opinion on something. At our hunting club, we have been having a problem with mice. First off, I'm gonna say, you don't have much of a hunting club if them hunters can't handle some mice. You got mice running around, you got a bunch of hunters there. What are they hunting with, peas? I'm sorry, I'm just a little angry. Especially when we get there at the first of the season and cabins have been locked up all summer. We tried putting out mouse traps, but some of them just kept eating the cheese and trap not working. Again, he's a fan, not a rocket scientist. Uh, maybe they need a little work on the trigger. What you think we need to try and kill these critters? We are infested with them. I got woke up three times, first night there, by a mice, a mice, pulling on my hair. Was not fun. Also, do you think peanut butter would work better than cheese? Cheese is misspelled. Really need your professional opinion on this. Thanks in advance, because I know I, I, you can help us. Sorry if my spelling ain't right. My spell check ain't work on my old computer. Alan, in parentheses, Nitro. Now, Alan, I'm gonna talk to you real quick. <laughs> I'm sorry. I understand that one of these names is a pseudonym and not your actual name, so I'm just gonna go with what I think is a genuine article. Now, Nitro, here's what I can help you with. Because I am a hunter, and I have a lot of experience with critters, and now, you got a mouse problem. And mice are a lot smarter than people think. You, you, you could be infested with them and every trap you try just, just fails completely. And I've had experience with this. I mean, I actually put together an entire contraption, a system, a few years ago to get rid of a mouse that was in my house, but it turns out the contraption I made was already a board game and, well, it just didn't work out the way I'd hoped. Besides, you try holding on to a mouse long enough to have it go through all that little stuff and finally get that little cage to fall down on him, well, pfft, he ain't gonna die anyway. He's just gonna sit there and run around in it for a little while. But 
I couldn't use that contraption because it was already licensed by the Milton Bradley people, and so I had to start thinking of how to build a better mousetrap. And the problem is, you think these mice have tiny little brains? Well, they're smarter and craftier than you think. They can get into your house, they can get into your food, they can survive a regular mouse trap, they can steal your Christmas presents. At least that's what my daddy always told me. I hated waking up Christmas morning and seeing nothing under the tree. Damn mice. Anyway, so I, after getting your letter, started thinking about the best mouse trap because the problem with a lot of mouse traps is they'll only get the mouse once. He can get the cheese and get out of there. One shot, that's all you got. So I came up with a contraption that I believe will take care of them crafty little critters. See, first, mouse comes and gets the food, right? Then a little bitty spring-loaded hand reaches out and grabs his leg, okay? And then you got a little bitty spring-loaded hammer that comes down, conks him on the head. Now, if that don't get him, there's a stick right behind him with little tiny nails in it that once the hammer hits, that trap, that spring-loaded contraption whips around and gets him that way. And if that don't work, two little hands with boxing gloves on them come on either side of his head and start beating him around the ears. And if that don't work, you got a little trap door there underneath with a little bitty hand on it and a tiny little can of raid. Pops out there, sprays him right in the face. And if that don't work, what you got is a little Iron Maiden. See, it comes out from the bottom, again, spring-loaded, after all this other stuff has happened, wraps itself around him, moves him up a little bit, and then crushes him with all them spikes, right? But then it also shoots him out onto a tiny little rack. These little ropes come out, grab his hands, little nether ropes come out, grab his legs, stretch him a little bit. Now, if that don't work, that will kind of fall forward and he'll fall into a guillotine, little tiny guillotine. Now, if that don't work, uh, after he gets out of the guillotine, he'll fall down into a tray with a little tiny automatic rifle that'll hopefully finish the job. Now, if that don't work, you probably best ought to leave him alone. Just negotiate how much of your house he can he can take as his own territory and just try not to go into his little area because, I mean, at that point, that's just terrifying. I mean, that's like Terminator Mouse. So you probably just best leave him alone, let him have what he wants. I mean, if he wants your kids, well, sorry, but it's Terminator Mouse. Anyway, but that's my suggestion. So I'm gonna start working on that. Should have them in production at Walmarts and, and pest control stores and my back porch soon, probably within the next few months. And, uh, you know, usually I'd close the show with a with a nice little closing segment, but you know, I'll just be honest, I don't even think I care anymore. We'll get on out of here. Well, that wasn't my letter. If you like this video, be sure to give us a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Oh, and Hoke, if you want your shirt back, read my letter next time. It smells like gingerbread. Sound is rolling. Slate. <clears throat> Action. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Think lights out. <laughs>